Hi, my name is Lindsay Casella, and I'm actually a um, undergrad student at Wayne State University. Right now, I am studying broadcast um, journalism instead of just general communication, and I also am doing a minor in public relations. And I actually just graduated from School Craft College with my liberal arts associates this past May. Um, and then I also do studying in not just broadcast, but television, journalism, as well as photography and radio. So I'm kind of in all the fields for that. So, okay. so I'm focusing more on the journalism industry from a broadcast TV standpoint because a lot of that is very male dominated compared to it being more of a female run um, thing as Anna was talking about. A lot of the industry broken down into news stories based on gender is the focus because that's where a lot of the stereotypical divides happen in broadcasting. So hard stories as shown up here typically are given to males with 57% 50 50 of them and only 55% of them going to women. And by hard news stories, we need like the stories that are about politics, the stories that are about business, stories that are about sports, that are the highlight topics that um, typically are shown at the highlight points of newscast. And then soft news stories go to 43% of males and 45% of females. Um, this is a breakdown of the top three networks of ABC, CBS, and NBC showing how the divide actually is broken down per the main newscasters, with NBC actually being one that is more female dominated with their stories and being the most gender equality compared to the other two stations. And Fox, I was not able to get stats on about those stories actually. Um, that is why they are not up here. <laughs> Um, so, in 2011, a study was done by Landmark Surveys of over 500 media companies worldwide, not just in the U.S., that showed that women only make up about one-third of the journalism workforce compared to the actual studying in college. Um, school majors, women actually make up two-thirds, and I can speak to this on my own campus. It is heavily, heavily driven by females. All of the professors are pretty much female. Are, program at Wayne is run by a male dean. He's brand new to the program and he actually seems amazing and I'm super excited to get to work with him. And one of my professors is male as well, but the rest of my studies probably for the next two years are going to be taught by females. Um, just to give you guys a little retrospect of that. And then traditionally some of the female topics that are still dominated by men but are considered to be more like gentle, that women should talk about because they'll have a more gentle, inspiring mother-like touch to it are the entertainment news, which would be the stars, what's going on in Hollywood kind of stuff, um, fashion news, hometown life and lifetime stories about you know who's getting married, who's um, inspiring in school districts around the local area, and well as inspiring accomplishment and outstanding community achievements. The, top one, which is entertainment news that everyone follows, is dominated by 61% of men presenting these, even though it is a highly, like, the research that goes into it is highly driven by women research reporters at the stations. Mm -hmm. They just don't get to actually go on camera for the stories. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess the big question is, why are men still dominating the industry when women are dominating the major and doing the work for everything? <laughs> A lot of it is just that perception, like I was talking about, in these typically female-dominated topics, a lot of the perceptions are, you know, women will have that gentler touch because of their motherly nature, they'll be seen as more um, nurturing, so stories such as, you know, the hard news stories about murder and domestic violence and rape are given to women to report because they think that it won't come off as bad, whereas if a man is the one reporting that, it will be seen as harsh and something that people actually have to pay attention to. So they kind of use a woman to glaze over the topic, which is still incredibly not okay. Um, there's still heavy sexism in the industry as well. Most of the stations are run by men. Most of the stations give the weather, the sports to the men because those are men-dominated 
topics and women aren't seen as allowed to be athletic and being seen as having a business mindset which we're trying to wake in the industry as well as just heavy criticism of women even about you know their outfits the women that will go on and have a business degree and have all of the requirements just as a man but won't get accredited because their outfit because they're showing their shoulders because they're not wearing heels and you can see under the desk that they're wearing tennis shoes or their hair is too long, their makeup's not done right. Things that should not be a factor and you'll never see a man get criticized for, but because someone doesn't like your dress, because someone doesn't like how you did your hair, you'll get the hate mail for it as a woman. And they're the ones that get criticized by the station and the station then has to take that into account and yell at them for it instead of making the public address their own concerns and saying, we're not going to support that criticism because we don't say anything wrong with it. Um, and that actually is a photo of me working at a radio station for my internship at school prep last year. Um, I was one of the only female to work there and one of the first to help start the radio station at school prep. Um, it really was a concern to me to undertake that as a female, as well as on this slide, it's showing me be a sideline reporter at a sports game for basketball, which we have never had a woman do that at school prep ever either. And it was reported on um, our public broadcasting station in Livonia. So that was really cool to undertake that. <laughs> but just some of my experience in the field. I have been writing freelance since I was 14 years old. I'm now 20. Um, I started writing just for the local paper in Livonia at a middle school age because I was writing about my brother who was in high school doing musical theater. And then now at School Prep, I was the managing editor of the School Prep Connection newspaper for a year and a half. I started off as an intern there in high school and then immediately advanced into the managing editor position once it was open because of that intern experience. I also worked on the radio show as well as video production, photo production at School Prep and at Wayne State Now and at my own radio show as well as working in a photojournalism class and doing my video production studies. And then just, I recently have come to light with the fact that I identify as a feminist and how that relates to my field and how it's going to change my studies. Um, I never really knew in high school what this meant. I never really identified with it because I never saw myself as being able to be a feminist. But it's basically showed me who I am as a person. Um, it's helped me really to inspire the other young women that are in my field as well as just around me that are scared to identify with this term because they're scared of the criticism that I have faced. I mean, I've had immense empowerment from women such as yourselves, from women in my own studies, at my own college, when I tell them this and ask them questions about it that have really driven me to be the leader that I should be. And really just found my sense of self-worth in high school. I faced immense, immense criticism for the way I looked, for the way I handled situations. I became anorexic for four years and almost died in high school because of that issue, because of the bullying I faced. I ended up going through domestic violence in one of my relationships as well as sexual violence. And that really almost kind of ended my life, but through this empowerment as a feminist, I have really been able to gain that experience back and kind of take my life back from those situations. That. So talking, oh, there was another slide, but I guess I got caught off, which is fine. Um, but talking about that, it's just, it's kind of the cons that even though I was a feminist, I face criticism, I face these um, situations I don't let it stop me. I don't let it stop me from trying to go forward in a female-dominated study that still is, you know, yes, it's female-dominated in the major, but in the industry, it still needs that woman's empowering touch. So we now have a video from Zoe, who couldn't be here. She's a study at Michigan um, Technological University. She's a class of 2020, and she's majoring in systems engineering and she's going to tell you about her major. Hi, hi my name is Zoe Kibble. I'm an obviously parent, but I'm an obviously home and I'm a lot of times we're disrespected and mistaken for the administrative staff, the custodial staff, like, like these people can't fathom that like, a woman could be in a like professional engineering position. And then 
oftentimes when personalities are discredited, I'm, I'm very outspoken, I'm very loud and vocal, I don't like to be walked all over, I spend a lot of time I like being called bossy, um, but a lot of times I meet mean, people who just like me and people love them, they love that they're like aggressive and they like trying to like step forward, they're not worried about like, you know, stepping on some toes to get to the top, but I've always been told to quiet down and, you know, act like a lady and ladies aren't loud, so I think that this is just the characteristics that we consider very helpful in a man's personality when he wants to climb the corporate ladder. When women act like that, we, like, immediately discredit them. We um, try to push them towards, like, traditionally more, like, feminine, or, like, quiet personality. And then we don't necessarily respect women who are quiet, like, soft-spoken, when we tell them to speak up, because otherwise you're never going to be heard. So, just like within my campus, like, I still see these biases, even though I think that my school tries to do a lot to help our female students. Um, there is this, like, big idea that we're trying to, like, <clears throat> do away with them, that, like, women come to have to get their MRS degree, and sorry, but I'm not paying this much in tuition every single year to settle down, and I came here to learn, and that's about it right now. So even though we try to be inclusive, like, we have a lot of issues and a lot of our program funding fall really flat because there's this idea among our um, female population, which is very small, we have a 3 to 1 ratio. Um, we're trying to improve it, but, but you know, that's another issue. Um, there's this idea among our students that came out last year in Missouri that, well, I already had to be smart to get here. I already had to be tough. I already had to work really, really hard. So thanks, but I don't need a support system now. Like, I've already made it here. I've already gotten this far. This is just something, these biases are just what I'm going to have to deal with in life, and I don't need support now. Which is really unfortunate, because I think, like, mentorship and support systems can help pretty much anyone, regardless of gender. <clears throat> so that's just an issue we run into. And um, even though there is a lot of support offered in offices, I think maybe that I think carries through once you get older, you think, well, I don't want to be viewed as weak because maybe you will be weak as characteristically feminine and you don't want your peers to have another reason to disrespect you. So, we run into that. Um, going back to what I had mentioned earlier, we push women towards like helper positions. We don't really consider staff positions to be helper positions, which is very fortunate because they are. I mean, particularly engineers, like, where would we be if we didn't have engineers to build our roads or build our cars or plant our factories? And it's just like looking at the big picture, just a lot of the times we consider STEM particularly to be like a very, like, forward thinking and, like, aggressive and you need to be ready to, like, put yourself out there kind of feel that, like, we don't really want, I shouldn't say want, we don't really think that women should do that. We think that women should be quieter and maybe that's going to be better served in, like, other rules. So, before I go way over my head, I could probably talk about this for like days and days. Um, I just want like to ask you guys to like take a second and just like think about your experiences regardless of your field, like when you first entered the workplace, and, like if you had to like change how you like behave in order to be respected. I know that like sometimes like I need to like act or I need to like act more feminine so that people will like listen to me or you know, vice versa. And it's kind of a teeter totter. <laughs> and then just like think about that, and then think about if there's a way for you to outreach to women in your field now and offer mentorship for them. Because, like I mentioned, I think mentorship can be like super helpful to anyone. Um, thank you. I hope you guys are enjoying the conference, and have a good night.